Hello everyone, I'm Adam, and today we're going to be talking about Android scenes. Let's get started. Alright, today we've got some objectives to cover. The first thing that we want to talk about is what are scenes. Then we want to talk about how do you create them, when should you use them, how to transition between them, and a variety of different transitions that are possible and also custom transitions. So a little bit of information. So transitions allow the changes made to the layout and appearance of the views in a user interface to be animated during application runtime. Now scenes represent either the entire layout of a user interface or a small subset of that layout represented by a view group. And this is all very important because you can create your scenes from a static layout file or you can dynamically create them depending on your application's needs. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So we're going to make this very simple to start with. And I always like to start with a couple of requirements. The first requirement is we want a single activity. We want to have a button in that activity that you click and it causes a scene to toggle. And we want to do that with a total of three different scenes. So let's jump into that. So the first thing we do is we very simply create scene one. And you can see here that scene one is nothing more than a constraint layout with a large red button that says go to scene two. You want to do that a couple more times. So I just did scene one, scene two, scene three. You can do this however you'd like. But at the end, you should, you should have three scenes, so three files that are named, whatever you want to name them, scene one, two, three, makes sense a button in each one of those and remember that the go to scene two is only going to apply to scene one so if you're editing the scene two layout you should say go to scene three if you're editing the scene three layout you should say go to scene one because you're just going to make a linear navigation right through those you could also make it random to add a little bit more fun to it all right so we've got our three scenes now we're going to then go over and we're going to create a simple activity, an empty activity. In this activity, you can see that I've got a global or a parent view container called a constraint layout, but inside of that I've done a relative layout. And that relative layout is literally set to the size of my constraint layout. And I like to just have, I mean that, that relative layout could be whatever you want, but um, the main thing here is that you pay attention to that ID which I have called root container. So if you set up all of that uh, with the proper constraints, and you should see constraint left to left apparent, constraint right to right apparent, and notice that I set the width and height to zero dp. So now we're going to go and we're going to actually build our scenes. And we're going to do this by opening up that activity Java file. Um, and I called this activity like scene test. So you can see that I'm setting my context, content view to activity underscore scene underscore test which would represent this file right here. We go, I go through then and I create three different scene objects. You see I declare them as private and I initialize them with the scene.getScene for layout. And I pass in the r.id.root container and that again is why that root container is so important because we want these scenes to be placed inside of those root containers, inside of that root container. And then you can see that I pass the ID of the actual layout file um, as the next parameter. And then this is looking for the valid context that you're currently in. And since activity um, suffices for that, you're passing in the pointer to the activity. So you do that for all three of them. You now have your scenes created. And let's move on to our next one, which is we're going to show scene one. So you, you show a scene just by simply calling the dot enter so the enter function on the object that you created for the scene so we're going to start the application just by having scene one show now we're going to pay attention to a little bit on the transitioning side so this is where it gets a little bit fun because we're going to add these two functions in that activity java file so we have on click one and on click two the cool thing here is basically what I've done is 
I have got a total of three of these functions that we're going to create. And each one of them uses the transition manager to go to the next scene. So if you click on the first one, so you're in scene one, you're telling the transition manager to go to scene two, but you're not telling it to use a transition of a particular type. So it's going to use whatever the default is. And then on click two, I'm telling it, you know what, we're going to make an explode transition. So let's use that to go to scene three. All right, so now we're going to look at some real code here. All right, I'm over here in Android Studio, and I'll show you the various files that I've got. So I'll start with the target SDK version I'm using is 27. Don't recommend using 28 yet. I haven't done enough testing on that yet. But 27 and anything below 27 to about 23 I've worked on pretty extensively with scenes, so I know it will work there. So we've got the various layouts we've created. You can see we've got four of them. This is our very simple root container layout, which is the activity scene. Um, so basically we only have one activity in this entire application. And then our three various scene activities. Again, you could create these programmatically and feed them in, but if they're static content, it's better to put them in a layout file just so you can keep track of it better. And you can see here, I've cleaned up some of my code from what I showed in the slideshow. Um, I initialized those to null. I pulled out uh, the root so we don't have to do the lookup multiple times. I pass it in three times there, and I call scene1.enter. These are my three functions that I created in each one of these scenes. So scene one references on click one, scene two references on click two, scene three references on click three, and you can kind of get an idea of what's happening here. I'm using the transition manager to go to scene two, then to scene three, and then back to scene one. You can see you get an idea of some of the other transitions that are here. So you can have slide with the gravity to the left, you can have slide with the gravity to the right, bottom, top, you can do explode. There's just a ton, a ton of different transitions that you can use. And if you control click on them, you can start to see some of the possible like gravity options there. Again, I always just recommend looking at some of the details of what you're actually coding, just so you get an idea of what you're doing. So what's this look like when I run it? Um, I've got the app running here. This is scene one visible. I hit scene two. And you can see that the default go is just kind of like a fade in and fade out. Now I'm going to be doing on click two. And you can see that it, it animated down. Um, and that was kind of like the explode animation there. And then we've got the scene three. You can see that it animated out. Scene two fades. And see so scene three comes in kind of like at a random. And that's it for today. Scenes are very useful when you want to do some really cool animations and transitions. Uh, for example, maybe you click a button and that button navigates to another part of the screen and the screen changes to something else, you could do some really amazing things. The only stipulation I would say is that if you're trying to do too much with that scene, it's probably better to go to a fragment. If it's a static content or something that is just being moved around or animated around, scenes are absolutely perfect for that. If you're doing like a ton of functionality within that scene, it's easier to segregate that content that uh, code away by using a fragment. Anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully this has been helpful. And until next time, keep coding.